Good morning, everybody. So let us start our lecture as usual by reviewing our previous few lectures. We were discussing a dog class, right? Okay, so we defined a dog class. By the way, what is a class? And you are, everybody should know what is a class. A class is a user-defined data type that contains two things, some variables and some functions to access those variables. By the way, the functions of a class are called methods. Okay. And we declared a dog class. A class is also is called a template or a blueprint of a of an object. But how your object will look like that is defined by your class. What kind of variables or attributes by the, these variables of a class are called attributes. What features and functions are called methods. Okay. And uh, we discuss getter and setter methods in our last lectures, right? Okay. Getter and setter methods are used to mainly to access private members in a secure manner. Greater and setters are used to access private members. In our last lectures, I discussed greater and setter. And by the way, today I will upload my previous lecture notes on YouTube. If you missed it, you can see it. We discussed how to define greater and setter methods. We can create getter and setter method using Eclipse with Eclipse just by right do a right click and then source and then generate getter and setter. But whatever I have my fields over here without getter and setter, if I select that field and if I generate then click on generate then it will click it will create getter and setter method. By the way, setter method is used to set a value for a field. Setter method does not return a value, but greater method returns a value. I usually remember this way get and then getter ret return, getter method returns value. We also discussed how, how to create constructors. A class can have multiple constructors, right? But the constructor will be different in terms of their parameter type or number of parameters. And we also discussed how to override the toString method. <coughs> right? Why do we need this to override the toString method? To return the actual value. Yes, to return a string or represent a string in textual format, in uh, string format. Okay, how do we like actually to represent? What is that? If I run this program dot main, if I run my program, then you see that it is showing me the actual actual values of d1, d2, and d3 object. But this is possible once I have my uh, to string method overridden within my doc class. Yeah, can you please turn off your phone? Yeah, shut down your phone, please. So, but if I do not have this to string method overridden, and if I run this program, then I will get something unexpected result that will not be meaningful or useful to me. If you see that I'm getting for some object, I'm getting memory location for this object. Okay. So in order to avoid this situation, in order to display my object in a meaningful manner, what do we do? We use, we override toasting method. Okay. This is the way in C++ Java we use override annotation. The other sign is the 
called annotation and then O is in uppercase but in Java in this is in Java a two string that two string method returns a string type always return a string okay and whatever you want to display that you will write over here as a combination of string and in In C sharp, we override the two string method a little bit differently. We use override as a keyword. So public keyword and Java we use override as, a, as an annotation. But here we write override, we use override as a keyword. So you use public override string and then in C sharp T is in uppercase for two string. Okay. Now give me for the next 10 minutes give focus. We want to learn something new. So for some books, in some books and in some programs, you will see that there is no two string method overridden. In some case, we can avoid to override the two string method. Okay, in that case, we can have any other method. For instance, public, let us make a method public, maybe void, mm, maybe display. This is my method. And for instance, I want to display, I want to use this method to display my object's features. For instance, I want to display this. I want to display, uh, I want to use my display method in order to display like this. Object name and then space, then object age. Okay, and then string on these features. For instance, then, let me do it. I can have a print method. And within print method, I can give whatever I like to print. For instance, let us print this. And this. So here is display method. I want to use my display method to display my object. How I am displaying my object? I am putting first name first, then age, then some space, and then age and then some space and then a strain and then so on like this and then i have my display method then is better if i say this dot name this dot name this dot is this dot strain this dot but it's optional since i don't have any argument over here so then I will call this method, for instance, for D1 object, if I call D1 dot display, then it will display my D1 object. Similarly, I can say D2 dot display, D3 dot display, d2 dot display d3 dot display d4 dot display d5 dot display maybe d6 dot display now i run this method let me let me uh, do not call this okay if i run this program Then it is displaying same thing for D1 object, it is displaying D1 object, it is displaying D2 object, D3 object, D4 object. So sometime in, yes, in some books or in some programs you will see that there is no two string method overridden. Instead of there will be another separate method like display method or display value method or output method, whatever name they put no matter. They use this method or to as an alternative way to display this an object. So whatever you put within this this uh, display method that should work. For instance, if you add some extra text or text like for instance name equal to name 
class. That means name will be, it will, it will show name and it will show like A's and it will show change. So that's to give extra some text. So it's showing me name, belly, and it is showing me A's colon. So that's to, however you like, that it will do for this kind of thing. <coughs> In this case, I'm sorry. <coughs> Since I do not have any argument for this method, so using this keyword is optional. If you use this keyword, it will work, or if you do not use, then still it will work. Anyone has any question? So, if we want to display, if we want to use this method, display method, say for instance, in this way, in C++, okay, in this case, this dot is optional. But if I have this as an argument here, then this is required, right? I discussed that in previous lecture. Why do we need this operator? If my field name is exactly same name with my, that need my, if I have some argument name exactly same name as my field name, then we need to use this, this. So this operator, it shows uh, it links this field with this, with the argument for the current object. Okay, for what, but for this case display method, since I do not have any arguments, so usually this is optional. You can use it, but do not use it, you will do same. Okay, so if I convert this program, in my dot class C plus plus, what is that? My dot class C plus plus. <coughs> Anyone has any question? C plus plus or Java people? Okay, so if I convert that one in pencil class CPP. Then, okay, people who are taking C++ lab, okay, tell me that, how do I do this? Okay, what do I need to do? What changes I need to do to make the display method? Thank you. Colon after public. And then instead of this, C out. And then instead of plus, less than less than this is called output operator actually this output operator is over written over here okay and then instead of this plus all plus will be over written use will be replaced by and this how should I display this is a pointer then minus and then like that is one is one is one is 
So here it should work for me and let us call this I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. See ya. And if I want to call p1 dot display, then it will do and the semicolon at the end and p2 dot display. Okay. If I run this, it should work. Mm -mm. Okay. The error no members names color in pencil. Oh my. Uh, my bad. No member name color. Okay, I don't have color over here. Serial number, model type. My mistake. So this is this is pencil. Oh, I'm sorry. This is my pencil class. So let me. In another section, I was discuss I'm discussing pencil. Uh, so in your section, I'm discussing dog, right? Dog class. Okay, dot class example, dot class example six. <coughs> okay, I got it, sorry. So I need to, uh, I need this method anywhere, anywhere within class that should work, okay? So this one. Okay, and then I need to call d1 dot display and I need to call d2 dot display. Okay, okay previous one is working. Uh, let me fix that one. Can you please shut down your phone? Okay, my mistake, what is that one? Oh, sorry, there is, a, there is an error over here. Okay, people C++, tell me how to fix this error on this point. What do you need to do here? Yes, get rid of this bracket, and instead of this bracket, I can maybe E L D. L. What E and D L is something like in, in C plus plus is like this. Backslash M. Okay, it's working. Any question so far? Yes. What is this override method override? What does? Okay, override method in C, are you taking C++ lab? No, no, it's okay, let me, I'm, I'm working on C++. The C++ method, this override operator, this override, is, we are overriding that output operator over here. So this is different and it needs to be done outside of my class. Remember that C++ people? We need to do this, this overriding the operator outside of the class, not inside the class. Okay, and for Java and C Sharp, 
we need to override the twisting method. The twisting method is used to display an object in textual representation, in string representation. I told you there are two ways. Either you can override this method, either you can override this method, or you can have a different method. To, so people usually override this twisting method in order to direct output, in order to direct output. For instance, if I want to output my D1 object like this, like a variable, in order to display is an object like a variable, normal variable. We need to override. Is okay? Is the that, that is the only way I can represent a an object like in normal variable fashion. <coughs> but if you do not want to override that twisting method, if you do not want to override that twisting method, you need to have another method. Like for instance, my doc class, I discussed, uh, for instance, uh, display method. If you have a display method like this, okay. So for display method, then if you, then you need to call that display method explicitly. Okay. So what changes I need to do here? People tell me, Java people. Okay, system dot out dot print ln new line. Okay. So if you have this display method just to display an object, then you need to call this display method explicitly. In your method, in your program, you need to call for D1 or D3 object. Then you need to call D1 dot display. D1 has a display method. And similarly, D2 dot, you see that as soon as I call D, it is running the display method. This is a way. Similarly, you can say D3, D4, maybe d5 and d6 okay uh, i think i don't have d4 d, d5 variable this has already been error but if you override the twisting method you do not need to call the twisting method explicitly we do not call twisting method like this way we do not call this way, do not need to call this. It will come automatically. This is called explicitly, okay. Uh, uh, uh. What is there, Tristan? In the dark class? Display. I do have dot in the dot class. I do have display. Okay. Where is the twisting method called if it's not called as a variable? The twisting method is usually defined within object class. We are not discussing object class so far. Object class is a top level class, built in class that is built in within the compiler. So whenever you take your next course, 1322, you will learn inheritance, another important feature of object-oriented programming. Then you will learn actually uh, in detail. Anyone has any other question?
So two string method, we do not need to call this two string method explicitly, but it is called implicitly. So if we run this program, it will give you exactly same same uh, output, but we do not need to call this two string method explicitly. But if your method is not that two string method, then you need to call that explicitly. For instance, the display method. I'm using to display the same purpose. I have my two string method and display method. We are using these two methods for same purpose. But if I dis uh, override my two string method, I do not need to call it explicitly. Okay, but if I have another method other than two string, okay, for instance, the display method, then I need to call that, that explicitly. That's it. Anyone has any question? Okay, maybe we have only a few more important things, topic we need to discuss. One of them is static modifier. I will discuss that in our next lecture. I, it needs at, at least 30 minutes <coughs> with full attention. So come to it, the next lecture with full attention. For first 30 minutes, you have to give full attention in order to understand static modifier. For instance, you see in our program, we use static keyword sometimes. We will discuss use and uses of static modifier in our next lecture, okay? Okay, today I'm done for my important topic. Now you are open. You can do whatever you like, except making any noise, okay? <laughs> Anyone has any question? Yes. Huh? I said I'm like kind of confused about override because it just seemed like it was a regular method. Okay, not regular. Okay, actually override is concept could be understand if you understand if you understand inheritance. Because in this course we are not discussing inheritance. Inheritance is an another important feature of object oriented programming. Through inheritance, what do we do? We inherit some existing features of another class. For instance, if our parents have some property, money or some houses or buildings or business, as, a, as children, we do inherit those properties, right? We inherit or enjoy those properties. We get right to those properties. So object-oriented programming has another concept that is called inheritance. You will learn that in next lecture. So through inheritance, we can reuse features. For instance, if I have another class, for instance, animal class, and if animal has some features and we do, if we extend animal class, that means inherit animal class in my dog class, then whatever features I do have for animal class, I will enjoy those in dog class. But in most of the programming languages, like for Java, there is a built-in class that is called object class. And by default, every class inherits those properties that are built in an object class. For instance, the, the, the concept of inheritance is uh, the style or format of inheriting is that we use extend keyword and we write the name of the our parent class and here in this case dog class is child class and object class is parent class so for java there is a built-in class object class that is built in is defined in compiler so by default when we declare a class every class by default extends or inherit properties from object class so this is default. You do not need to use this. Even use this extent object or do not use extent object. 
all of my new object for dog class gets properties from object class. Object class is defined within the compiler. So whenever you see, whenever we you see, notice that whenever I say even d1 dot, you see that there are some, we discussed this, like there are some methods, for instance here, this equals method, it, it takes an object type argument and it returns a boolean value and it is defined in the object class. Similarly, there is a method is called two string method. You see the two string method. Two string method is originally defined within object class, but in the in the derived class here in the dog class we explicitly defined it. So this is why it is showing this two string method over here. But you see that there are other methods like notify, notify wall, and then wait methods. These are defined within object class. So it is difficult for me to explain those. Just will take time. Inheritance, we will discuss this in the next lecture. I have recorded video for 1022 about inheritance. If you watch those lectures, then you will be able to understand. But we need to inherit, we need to override this, sometimes this method. Uh, for instance, the two string method has its own definition in its parent class. If we want to redefine it, we are, we are redefining it in my doc class. This is why we are overriding this. Overriding means rewriting. This in our, our doc class. So method overriding and method overloading. These are two important features, other two important features of object oriented programming. In aggregation, we say them polymorphism. Method overloading and method overriding. Method overriding is to rewrite a method. In case of method overriding, the object signature, method signature is exactly same. And these are defined in different class. For instance, we have a sound method over here, for instance, right? We did not override sound method in this class. Only we have, so all object will make same sound. But if I want to make my dog, different kind of dog, will make different kind of sound. If I want to do that, then there is a way. But we are not discussing that in this, lecture, in this course. That is inheritance or abstraction. Yes. Can you go over an old exam problem? Yes. Yes, that is why I want to go now. But before that, I want to make sure anyone has any other question. Okay. How long? How many minutes I do have? Hmm? Ten minutes. Okay. In my morning lecture for another section, I started reviewing uh, old exams. I started from test. The fall 2018, test 3A had uh, 3A. This had a question. Question number two was about class. So let me quickly <coughs> do this. Actually, this was the question. Maybe the question or original question was like this. Let me go back. Okay. Question was like this. Let us understand the question, then I will go. So the government is working on a top secret project and needs your help. That's good. 
they want you to prototype a spy turtle okay to create a spy turtle prototype means to create a type or template of a spy turtle they need to know where the turtle is at all time the location of the turtle okay by doing so each turtle has an x coordinate and an y coordinate okay so that means we need to make a class named spy turtle and spy turtle will have two variables so far we got x and y coordinate coordinate and y coordinate the turtle can hold up 10 microphones okay we need another variable number of microphones okay that by default this value will be 10 okay and has this ability to drop a microphone to decrease microphone number from 10 to 9 9 to 8 something okay De okay decreasing the number of microphones by one so every time it will decrease the microphone by one for this question you will write a class okay write a class then comma class variables and a constructor for the spy turtle so you have to write a class named spy turtle and you have to write the variables what are the variable i need to get from here I got X, I got Y, and I have got microphone. Three variables here. Okay. And I need to define a class. I need to define spy turtle. Uh, constructor, and I need to define, you also need to write a method called drop mic that decreases the number of microphones by one. Okay, fill in the comments below that within this space you have to write your class, your, your variables and your constructors and you put your mic method over here. Okay, so everybody understand the question so far? So we, there are some spaces, we need to start your class over here, we need to put uh, attributes or variable here, we need to put constructor here, it should uh, take uh, in starting xy position and initialize the variables, okay, put the method drop mic over here. So I already, this uh, time is short here, so I already discussed this in my previous section. Let me put my all of my requirements one by one here and put my code over here. So if I want to, at this point I feel comfortable to write the right actual program code. But let us start with pseudocode over here. For pseudocode, I'm writing pseudo, I wrote pseudocode, the shortcut. I did not write end, uh, begin or end, okay? You need to write, if you want to write pseudocode, then you need to write begin, end for each method or each variable, whatever other format, but I, I use pseudo pseudocode. Okay, these are not real pseudocode. So my class will be spy turtle. This is my class I need to start with. So in pseudocode format, there is no curly brackets. So this is but we do use space. So what kind of variable we need? X, X coordinate and Y coordinate. You give any name, for instance, X coordinate or e, e, X, Y coordinate or Y. And then we need another variable, integer type variable, mic number. How many mic? Okay. Then we need a constructor, right? Constructor need to be private and public. And we know that a constructor does not have a return type even void not void so this is my constructor spy turtle in pseudocode you have to explicitly mention that this is constructor okay and then in the constructor you will ask to initialize the variable x and y any variable you can initialize for instance x equal to 100 y equal to 200 or y equal to 100 no matter whatever you decide okay and the mic number initially it says mic number should be 10, 10 mics. 
initially you can hold 10 miles it's fine okay i know that a, a, a program can have multiple constructors so you can define your default constructor like this or you can have constructor like this In this problem does not say that you cannot you will have default constructor or argumented constructor you can have your argumented constructor like this or you can have your default constructor like this and then finally it says you need a display method or drop mic method so my drop mic method what it will do it will decrease the mic number by one so the mic number will be mic number minus one or what it will do it will decrease my mic number by one okay that is what you are asked to do for this problem that's all anyone has any question do you have to have a return statement for a <coughs> okay if i say see i said void so I don't need to return, but if I want to say integer return, then I will say, but good question, uh, uh, and then I need to say return my number. By the way, I can do this, this statement two ways here. Okay, mic equal to mic minus one, or I can say mic minus minus. So I, if I do not like do this way, if I do not like to this way, then I can do return mic mic. In, uh, but I, if I do return, this is I need to do prefix notation. If I do postfix notation, I tried in other section, it will not give me exact result. But postfix notation does it what with the old value and display update the value later after it is done okay so if you want to return this way this statement then we need to you must need to use this one or for simplicity you can do this way mic equal to mic minus one and then return mic number and i have a java implementation of my code this program the java implementation is this for instance my spy turtle is here just in order to save space i put all together in one online because in order to save my space so this is my constructor this is my constructor and this is my drop mic and within my main method for instance if i create my turtle spy turtle one in this program you are not asked to create any object you are asked only to create class so then pi turtle t1 equal to this for instance t1 equal to new spy turtle and then if i call for instance t1 dot mic number initially mic number was in my default constructor mic number was 10 but if i call after calling the drop up method if i say if i say uh, t1 dot t1 dot drop mic then it will show uh, 9 i believe Okay, the program is here, Java program is here. I will put this in my replete. Okay. And the C sub version of this program is here. C sub version of this my of my program is here. And let me see if I have Java version. And C version is here. Okay, so people who are taking C++ uh, lab, I will talk to you later. Let, let me finish it with, uh, with Java. So, but this one is C++, C sharp, Java. 
Okay. So I have Java. Mm -mm. So this one is not Java. C, C sharp. And I will convert it in Java. And I will put it in. Anyone has any questions so far? Okay, and then Okay, this is my program in Java format, and I also have it in uh, C++. The people who are taking C++ format, you know that, that we need to use uh, arrow sign dash the minus this angle bracket greater than and instead of dot, and then it will work. And I also have a C sharp program. Not this. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody.